This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, June the 8th, 2019. It's the feast day of Blessed Mariam Theresa of Kerala, India. She was born in 1876 into declining wealth, and she grew up in poverty. She was drawn from a young age to intense penance, and for most of her life experienced intense mystical visions, including the stigmata. Her home life was chaotic. Her father all but bankrupted the family. He was married several times. She was a result of the second marriage. Her mother had some serious issues. She wanted to join a convent, and she was turned down. She wanted to establish a mission house, and she was turned down. At one point, the local priest convinced the bishop that she was possessed, so she was made to undergo a series of exorcisms. After her mother's death, she was able to establish a small convent and to live out her days there in relative peace, save for her penances and her mystical experiences. The order she founded is, ironically or not, called the Congregation of the Holy Family. Today in 1794, the French Revolution was in full effect, one of the core principles of which was the eradication of Catholicism and the creation of a religion based upon pure human reason. And today, that new official religion was inaugurated in France under the title Cult of the Supreme Being. Now, this isn't the same as the Cult of Reason, which was established a year earlier. The cult of the supreme being replaced the cult of reason, and Robespierre was its great high priest. Theologically, it was just deism, which argues that God exists as a supreme intelligence, kind of like a clockmaker, who created the universe and then gets out of the way. This is basically the way that Plato understood the creation of the universe and the so-called demiurge. The tagline for this new religion, which was actually just neo-paganism, was the French people recognize the supreme being and the immortality of the soul. Sharp listeners will recognize these ideas as the basis of Freemasonry, which was established primarily for the destruction of the Catholic faith. It began in Italy to wrest power in central Italy from the Pope, and it spread to England and then to the United States. And at its heart, this kind of religion rejects the loving mercy of God by rejecting that God has any interest in the events of human life. This is generally horrifying until you realize that if God doesn't care about us much at all, then he isn't bothered by our moral choices, and thus morality can be remade to my liking. And that's why the modern religious mindset of the Western world is what it is. Speaking of, today in 1949, George Orwell's famous dystopian novel, 1984, was published. How's that for coincidence slash divine providence? Orwell was born Eric Arthur Blair, but wrote his controversial works under a pen name. And that pen name is now synonymous with totalitarian and authoritarian fears. A society is Orwellian if it limits free speech or the press or, you know, deplatforms people it doesn't agree with or other surely fictional things. Orwell's work has given us a slew of neologisms, new words and phrases in English. The most popular being Big Brother, Thought Police, Newspeak, and Thought Crime. 1984 has been compared with Aldous Huxley's novel Brave New World, which was published two decades earlier and which touts the dangers of governmental overreach into society, culture, and daily life. Both texts predict the kind of life that people living in socialist Russia and China would experience, and those experiences validated the anxieties raised by Orwell and Huxley. As China implements increasingly intense surveillance, including a system of points to measure adherence of individual opinions to the Communist Party propaganda, and as the internet is increasingly politicized with services like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube increasingly banning contrary voices, fears associated with dystopian writings like 1984 and Brave New World and others are on the rise. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.